Hello, folks. I'm Dennis Tucker, and I preach a lot of Road Church Christ. I uh, hope you would uh, take the time, maybe to sit down for a few minutes and to study along with me. I want to look at a subject that really I don't hear discussed very much. Well, let me, first of all, interject something here. I should have done this at the beginning. But if you had listened to this morning's YouTube sermon, you would uh, expect me to be talking about the church tonight. But after I did that lesson, I kind of reworked it a little bit. If you want to listen to the new and improved version, if you want to call it that, and you can go to our website, lrcoc.com, and listen to the audio version of that lesson. I kind of redid a little bit of it, not much, but I decided to, uh, to talk about the church in another lesson, another Sunday. And so I wanted, though, to talk about a subject that we don't usually talk about very much, but yet it is a biblical subject, and that is of fasting. I don't know how many times we have people say, why is it that, uh, you know, that we don't have classes on this? Should I be fasting? The question comes up. Should I be fasting? On what occasions uh, should I, I fast? Or is it a command for us to fast? And those kind of things are often asked. And we, I realize that, you know, food is a big part of our society. That we have, uh, you know, many of you had a, a good breakfast this morning, had uh, lunch or dinner and uh, uh, supper tonight. And basically, we live in a culture of food. And that we go to fast food places like McDonald's and Pizza Hut and Burger King and Chick-fil-A and all those to grab a bite to eat. And in fact, uh, food is often a part of our culture in the sense of just what we had, Thanksgiving. Just by the idea of saying Thanksgiving, many of us think about turkey and dressing and all the fixings go along with that and having a big hearty meal that day or we think about when there's a funeral and people think about bringing or taking food to the grieving family uh, we talk about comfort food whenever you're sick or whenever you're are grieving uh, for July we think about cookouts and hot dogs and hamburgers so food is a big part of our society the way we think about things and as you look at it we uh, you know occasionally the subject of fasting does come up and like I said, you know, people ask questions, what does the Bible say about fasting? Uh, what is fasting really? What exactly is it when it mentions that? Why do people fast in the Bible? Uh, are we fasting today? If so, why? If not, why not? Th those kind of questions come up. So first of all, we're going to look at this. And really, this is more like a class than I would think of a, as a normal sermon, okay? And so uh, first of all, people may ask, okay, what is fasting? And normally, Fasting involves the absence of food and not necessarily water. But basically the idea, we're not going to take in solid nourishment. And this would mean then no Big, uh, big Macs and then no steak and potatoes, those kind of things. But basically, you, know, you can drink water and maybe some other liquids that people would think of as fasting. All right? Then you look at it, and the Bible realizes that partial fast involves restriction, but not all things are you abstain from. For instance, in Daniel 10 chapter, in verse 2 and 3, it says, Those days I, Daniel's morning three or four weeks, I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came to my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till the three whole weeks were ful uh, fulfilled. So there he specifies exactly what he's abstaining from and the categories of things he's abstaining from. Now we may think of this as kind of a restricted diet. Well, we're not going to have this here. I guess maybe a, a way of comparison of this, uh, sometimes people during time of Lent, our Catholic friends may say, I'm not going to have a particular food, so they abstain from that. And we think about people in the Bible, that read out, that had a particular diet. Uh, Samson and John the Baptist come to mind. And uh, it's all about Samson in uh, Judges 13, verse 4, and verse 7, it says he, he would drink no wine or similar drinks, nor eat anything unclean. Okay, so specifies there. In John the Baptist's case, in Matthew 3, verse 4, it said, as food was locusts, wild honey. And so it was a restricted diet both of those people had. Now, on rare occasions, we do read about people that had an absolute fast, meaning no food and no liquids at all. The people of Nineveh, when you go back to the book of Jonah, and let me just read Jonah, third chapter, verse 5 through 10, at the preaching of Jonah, and being told that, that their city is about ready to be destroyed, 
In verse 5, it said, So the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed a fast, put on sackcloth from the grayest to the least of them. Then word came to King Nineveh, and he rose from his throne and laid aside his robe, covered it with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And it caused to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king as noble, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink water. But let each man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his spirit fierce anger so that we may not perish? Now, there is specified exactly what the fast was. No solid food, no food, and no drink at all. And so, there are the cases we read about a total fast. Okay? Esther. In the book of Esther, before she was going to go to, before a king Osiris, and she had found out that a decree had been issued against her people, and her response was to Mordecai to tell her people, that the, the fast for me, this is Esther 4, verse 16, fast for me, neither eat nor drink for three days, uh, night or day. So then for those three days, it was again a total fast, no drinking, no food at all. And there are times in the Bible, and so, so far we've gone through you know, a, a limited fast, uh, a limited diet. We have gone through the idea of fasting, which you did not have anything to eat or drink. And then there are times in the Bible you read about fast by which you realize there had to be some kind of divine intervention. Now, I'm not a doctor. I don't pretend to be one. I did not sleep at Holiday Inn Express last night. And so I can't tell you exactly how long a person can survive without food. And I cannot tell you exactly how long a person can survive without water. But I do know it is a limited time period. And especially for the water. It's a very limited time period. And so there are times in the Bible we read about fast that lasted such a long time. The only way to explain how it's possible is that there had to be divine intervention. And so we could turn to Deuteronomy. And Moses fasted for 40 days and without eating or drinking liquids. And so when I look at Deuteronomy, and I read here, let me get my uh, verse uh, laid out here so I can tell you exactly what I'm reading from. In Deuteronomy, the ninth chapter, verse 9, it says, And when I went up into the mountain to receive the tablets of stone, the tablets of the covenant which the Lord made with you, then I stayed on the mountain forty days and forty nights. I neither ate bread nor drank water. So for forty days, forty nights, specifies no eating and no drinking water at all. Now, I know that person cannot survive. Perhaps they can survive forty days without food. But 40 days of that water is not possible. And so there had to be some kind of divine intervention there. The same thing about Elijah. When he goes without food or drink for 40 days and nights. And over in 1 Kings 19, verse 7 and 8, it said, The angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he rose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights as our Horeb, the mountain of God. And so there we see the divine intervention, since what the angel had given him was allowed him or to sustain him for those 40 days during that time period. So we look and we find there are different lengths of fast then. So we have fasts, like some of them were total fast, some of them were limited in one way or another. And so then we see that their length of fast varied also. We're looking here primarily in the Old Testament in this lesson. And so we see that one day could be a fast from basically sunrise to sunset. And after sundown, then food would be taken in. And so you look at Judges 20, verse 26. It said, Then all the children of Israel, that is, all the people, went up and came to the house of God and went. They sat there before the Lord and fasted that day until evening, and they offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. Now, it specifies until evening, and then after that, the fast ended here. Well, we, I'll read that passage. And so just time was kind of different in our same way that we measure time by midnight to midnight. Well, they measured actually from 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. was their day. So that would have been the end of that day. And so till evening is when they fasted. We find the Israelites fasted 
at the death of Saul and Jonathan. Saul and Jonathan, let me say it right. In 2 Samuel 1, verse 12, it says, And they mourned and wept and fasted till evening for Saul and for Jonathan's son, for the people of the Lord and for the house of Israel, because they had fallen by the sword. Now again, it specified until evening. So at that point, then they could eat again. A day was mourning for Abner. And you may recall that Abner had been killed and when, uh, by, by a slight hand, if you would, by Joab. But David's reaction to that is the fact in 2 Samuel 3, verse 35 says, And when all the people came to persuade David to eat food while it was, so, while it was still day, David took an oath saying, God do so to me, and more also if I taste bread or anything else until the sun goes down. So again, it specifies here the length of time until the sun goes down. After that, then the fast would end. And then we have also a, a fast that lasted one night mentioned in the Bible. And this deals with David, uh, excuse me, with Daniel when he's in the lion's den. If you look over in Daniel 6 chapter, and there's a case where a uh, decree had been laid out that a person could not uh, pray uh, except to the king for a period of time. And Daniel's caught praying, and so he was taken to the lion's den. And here's the king's reaction to that while he's in the lion's den. And Daniel 6 verse 18 said, Now the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting, and no musicians were brought before him, and he slipped went from him. And so there is talking about that night of fasting. That's how long he did and so it could be for a very limited time, to the, for one day or till the sun goes down or even for night time. And then we find Esther uh, fasted three days and nights. And so a different length of time. If you look over in Esther 4, verse 16, and there it said, Go gather all the Jews who are present in Shusan and fast for me, neither eat nor drink for three days, day or night. My may sir, so I will fast likewise, and so I will go to the king, which is against the law. If I perish, I perish. And notice here then, it specifies this was a complete fast, no eating nor drinking, and the length of time was three days and three nights. And so there we have that specifies that length of time. Then also we have fast that lasted seven days when uh, Saul, uh, Saul and Jonathan were killed. And the people of Gibeah, Jabez Gibeah, uh, heard about that, and they go and get uh, the bo body, actually, of, of uh, Jonathan and Saul. But it says, 1 Samuel 3, uh, 31, verse 13, Then they took the bones and buried them under the Tamarisk tree at Jabesh and fasted seven days. So, you know, we had different lengths of time. And my point here is that sometimes the fast ended at sunset. It'd be one day. Sometimes it was overnight. Uh, there are times here we find those three days, three nights. There's other times here of seven days talked about. And finally, the 40 days that I mentioned with, with Moses and Elijah. So we had different lengths of time of fasting in the Old Testament. Now, why? Why do people fast is another question. So we have what fast was, sometimes total abstaining from food, sometimes partial and that way may eat but drink, and other times no eating or drinking, or sometimes they could, uh, like the uh, case of uh, Samson and, and uh, John the Baptist, it has a very limited diet, okay? And other times no food at all, no drink at all, which would require divine intervention. And so then we have different lengths of time, anyway, from one day to three days to seven days to 40 days. Now, why? Okay, this kind of gets to that point of why people fasted. And if you read about the Day of Atonement, you don't actually have the word fast mentioned, but we have another term used that many scholars believe refers to the idea of fasting. Over in Leviticus 16, verse 29, it's talking about the Day of Atonement. It says, This shall be a statute for for you in the seventh month on the tenth day of the month. You shall afflict your souls and do no work at all, whether a native of your own country or a stranger dwells among you. There's a phrase there, you shall afflict your souls. And many scholars believe that the idea is there reference the idea of fasting. And really, if this is not, if this doesn't refer to fasting, I don't know any place really where it is commanded in the law of Moses to not fa uh, to fast. If you go over to the New Testament, Acts 27, verse 9, which is a reference to the Day of Atonement, and Paul going to Jerusalem to observe it, and it said in Acts 27, verse 9, 
And when most time it had been spent, the setting was now dangerous because the fast was already over, Paul advised him. And so here we find the fast then is related to the custom of, at least in time of the New Testament, to the Day of Atonement. And so that's the only time that I could find the law of Moses where you have specifically the idea of fasting talked about and commanded. We do find that fasting sometimes was in a time of war and because of threat of war. If you look over in the book of uh, Judges, in Judges uh, 20, verse 26, and there it reads, said, Then all the children of Israel, that is, all the people went up and came to the house of God and wept. They sat there before for the Lord and fasted that until, day until evening and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And so there's a response to the idea of threat of war is that they fast. We know, you know, when, when there's a threat of danger, it meant danger. And what these people were doing, we haven't really stressed as much, but fasting was often connected with the idea of prayer. Well, this would be a case of doing that. We find fasting was often connected with either sickness or death. When you read about David and his child, his son, that was going to die, but the one that's going to see Bathsheba, and uh, Nathan the prophet told him that this child would die. We find in 2 Samuel 12, verse 16 through 23, that David was fasting during that time period. And, and we find, and we already read about the fact of David uh, in the case of Jonathan and Saul in 2 Samuel 1, verse 12, that he was fasting uh, because of their death. And so we can relate to that. A lot of times whenever you have either sickness, uh, you know, where you have a loved one in the hospital and you're sitting up with them and you have a, a loved one who passes away that people often, we have to encourage people to eat because of uh, just maybe overcome with grief or sorrow. And so you, that, sometimes it's for that reason. Then also to see that it was connected also with seeking God's forgiveness. Uh, kind of connected with the idea of repentance, realizing that we are in a dire situation with God, and we are going to pray to God and ask for his forgiveness. Now, again, Moses fasted 40 days because of the sin of Israel. If you go to Deuteronomy in the ninth chapter, verse 15, and this is after they had made the golden calf, it says, So I turned and came down from the mountain, the mountain burned with fire, and two tablets of the covenant were my two hands. And so that's Deuteronomy 9, verse 15. Now, if you go into verse 18, Time's sake, we're going to kind of skip the uh, 16, 17. In verse 18, it says, And I fell down before the Lord, and it was at the first 40 days, 40 nights, I neither ate bread nor drank water because of all your sin which you committed in doing wickedly in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Now, so this is different than the 40 days, 40 nights when he's on Mount Sinai receiving the law. This is later on, uh, and almost immediately later on, but later on, and that the fasting because of the sins they had committed against God. We even read about wicked Ahab, uh, king of Israel in the Old Testament. And that Ahab had, with Jezebel's help, had uh, basically killed Naboth in order to get his vineyard. Well, Elijah the prophet confronts Ahab because Ahab tells him the result of this as far as the death of Ahab and death of uh, Jezebel. In verse 27 of 1 Samuel 21, verse 27, it says, so it was when Ahab heard these words, they tore his clothes and put sackcloth on his body and fasted lay in sackcloth and went about mourning. And so there's the sense of sorrow for what he had done. Not necessarily repentance, by the way. Now, I don't see Ahab ever repenting in his life, but sorrow for what he had done. Again, we look at Nineveh, at the preaching of Jonah. We already read the passage, so I'm not going to read it again. But when Jonah goes to them and tells them 40 days that God's going to destroy the city of Nineveh, and they repented, it talks about they fasted and sackcloth upon sackcloth, and they fasted for those, for a time period there. Daniel fasted as he confessed sins of Israel, Daniel 9th chapter. And so there's the case, and the remnant, when they came back from uh, captivity and were back in the land of Canaan back in Jerusalem, and we have the people uh, were read the law of God. And Daniel uh, 8 chapter, Daniel 9 chapter, verse 1 to 3, speaks about when they saw what had the wickedness of their fathers that they fasted then because of that. 
And so it's connected then with times of repentance, I'm going to call this, a time of sorrowful sin. Then also times of distress, and that is Nineveh. Well, uh, excuse me, uh, no, 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 but uh, Nehemiah. Nehemiah, the first chapter, he's a king's cupbearer, and on that occasion, it starts off with a here's word back from Jerusalem about what's going on and how bad things are going. And Nehemiah 1 verse 4, he fasted because of just how bad things were in Jerusalem at that time. And then and finally, I mentioned that the Jews fasted when they heard that uh, Haman had obtained the, the king's decree against them in uh, Esther 4 verse 3. So we had those different situations. And that is sometimes it was because of uh, times of war, uh, some, uh, like the atonement was commanded. Uh, sometimes it was because of sickness and death. Sometimes it was because of, of basically uh, seeking God's forgiveness. And sometimes just times of general distress about what's going on. And so finally, or the fourth part, point here is the purpose of fasting. Now, again, it's kind of overlapping some of what you just said, but fasting all times was a natural reaction to the stress and grief people were feeling. Again, loved ones. They're, they're, you don't have to, we have to usually encourage people to eat during that time period, that they often lose their appetite, often because of sorrow. And so we encourage people to eat after a loved one dies. Uh, David did not continue to fast after his child died, but he went and got ready and had some food. And so a lot of times there's a natural response. A lot of times, there's times you read the Bible where it's to discipline oneself and to afflict their soul, the Bible talks about. Over in Psalm 69, verse 10, it says, When I wept and chased my soul with fasting, that became my reproach. Now, now keep in mind here, we're not talking about uh, fasting so as simply the physical body, but here it connects with the idea of the soul of man. In other words, they were not fasting so as to lose weight. And that wasn't a, pro, a, a purpose of it, but instead to draw near to God and to, I would say, to give more time to prayer and more time to thought about God and to rely on God to help them during this time period. It was to humble the soul. As you look over in Psalms 35, verse 13, As for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth, and I humble myself with fasting, and my prayer will return to my own heart. And that is, he fasted what? In order to draw near to God. And there's sort of the humble himself. And then also to ask God's favor. In Ezra, Nehemiah, in Ezra 9th chapter, we see that there are certain things mentioned in the prayer of, in that passage, and that is forgiveness of sin that are fasting and ask God's favor for forgiveness of sin, for the loved ones to be healed, for protection from danger, for deliverance from one's enemies, and to basically fast is connected with prayer in these situations. And then finally, when I say, okay, there are certain warnings in the Old Testament that really does carry on to the New Testament as far as fasting. And we'll talk about New Testament in the next lesson on fasting. But fasting it can turn into an external show. It can turn it into something that becomes more ceremonial than actual uh, drawing near to God. And that is a ritual. Now, maybe that's a better word. A ritual that, that people simply, they fast and think, well, God's going to forgive me because I fast, although they're not seeking to do what God said to do. And Isaiah 53, Isaiah 58, verse 3, the first part of verse 3, it says, why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls, you take no notice? And the re response to that, and, and basically they, they realized, well, they seemed to be fasting. God wasn't listening to them. God wasn't, it wasn't paying off for them as far as God blessing them or God relieving their affliction. And God's response, verses 3 through 5, the rest part of verse 3 through 5, basically was, because you're not fasting for the right reasons. Again, no ceremonial. And God goes and specifies that instead of fasting, what he wanted to see was some of the things. In verse 6, he wanted them to loose the bonds of wickedness, to stop being a wicked people. He wanted them to let the oppressed go free in verse 6. He wanted them to share bread with the hungry in verse 7. He wanted them to 
cover their naked. In other words, take care of those who were needy and of those who were afflicted. Take care of them instead of fasting. And fasting was not a substitute for obedience. It was not something that, okay, I'm going to disobey God, so let me fast and then it's okay. No, it was they were to obey God. And so people want to know if they should continue fasting. And Zechariah 7 verse 3, that's the question they, they brought should we continue to fast? And again, the purpose of fasting is wrong. Verse 4 through 6 specifies that. That it was, again, a show of force or a show of ritualism. And then Zechariah 7, verse 7 through 10, it says, instead of fasting, they should have been obeying the law. Again, it's not a substitute for obedience. And therefore, in Zechariah 11, uh, 11 chapter, 14 chapter, he's saying to them, your fast is no good. Your fast has no value one bit whatsoever. It is simply an external show. And a, a special note here should be also mentioned. There's one time that King Saul, in this first name of the 14th chapter, and this was when Jonathan had kind of started a battle on his own, and uh, King Saul was with his men, and they see the battle starts up, and they start into the battle, and King Saul, and on the spur of the moment, basically commanded that nobody in his army could basically eat or drink anything while the battle's going on. And as you look at that 14th chapter, find that was a foolish fast, that was a foolish thing to do. That he actually limited uh, the ability of his troops to fight as they would get tired and they would get hungry. And so that was a foolish fast in the Bible. So, so far, what we've done is to kind of summarize what we have in our study there. Now, the fasting is a biblical subject. As practiced in various forms in the Old Testament for different lengths of time, it was done mostly individually, but sometimes as a group, as a city, in the city of Nineveh, and for different reasons. And we find there was fasting. And it was, not, it was more than just simply not eating. And the common per theme was to please God and show one reliance on him and to draw near to God as we live our lives. That, that's what we find in the Old Testament. And so we'll look at New Testament next lesson. I appreciate you watching. And honestly, if you, if you continue all the way through this, let me just tell you, our website will have this outline on it. And, uh, and not only that, but also we'll have, I'll make the PowerPoint available for this lesson on our website. So that if you want to look at it, study it more on your own, maybe it'll, it'll help you a little bit to study it with the outline in your hand. And But uh, but we simply to give us better understanding of this. But I appreciate you watching. And I'd like to, again, invite you to come be with us if you can at Lyak Road Church of Christ. We're located at 1687 Lyak Road, Litchfield, Kentucky. Sunday morning, Bible study at 930, worship at 1025. Sundays at 5 p.m. we have worship. And on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. we have Bible class again. Feel free to share this and also hit the like button. And if I can help you in any way you study the Bible, let me know. Our desire is something to do with the Bible teaches. I thank you. I hope you have a good week.